But we've been talking about the offensive woes for the commanders. A lot is on the offensive line. A lot is on Sam Howell. Here's what Jay Gruden said about this last commander's game as he was on the Chris Russell show on the Team 980. Major steps back in a lot of positions. That's the biggest concern. You know, it's, uh, you know, they were still in the game for most of the part. They had plenty of opportunities to get back in the game, but just couldn't do it offensively. Nine sacks, four picks. Um, that's not going to cut it. And I really didn't see a lot of separation out there by the receivers. Buffalo did an excellent job of matching the routes and playing tight coverage. Yeah, that, that that's what yeah. pro football focus is seeing. Our he receivers al- not getting open. He, he also mentioned it again, too. I think, it, I I think the, the receivers really stuck out to Jay. How do you, as a coach, get him to understand that that clock has got to be two and a half seconds max, not three or three and a half seconds? How do you do that? It's it's hard, especially when a lot of times when he went back to pass, there wasn't anybody open. Uh, there was a few times where he could have reset his feet and gone back, uh, like the play first and goal to six, where he threw the – forced the ball into coverage. If he would have reset his feet and worked backside, there's a guy wide open in the end zone. He's stuck – he is stuck on receivers too long, waiting for him mm-hmm. to uncover, waiting for him to get open instead of getting off to his next progression or checking it down to the back really quick and understanding that the pressure is coming, and it's for real, especially a rush like Buffalo. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of surprising because we we just assume McLaurin is one of the better McLaurin receivers. McLaurin and Dotson, the, they're technicians. Right. And you just assume that those – Now, maybe the toe is still bothering McLaurin, and maybe that has something to do with yeah, it. Yeah, I'm but sure that's part of it. Breaking out of his routes, but – you would expect those guys to be open. They look like they were open in the Denver game. Right. Or if the routes are predictable. But against Gruden, a better Gruden, defense. Gruden's also alluding mm-hmm. to that the defense kind of knew the routes that they were running. Yeah, yeah. He's saying it's they were surprising. matching their routes with yes. the defense. You know what that is? That's play calling, coordinating. I, I, I've, I've been stunned at the minimal pre-snap motion. Now, I'm not a student of Kansas City by far. Do they run this little pre-snap motion? I'm just, I'm just curious. I'm assuming we're stealing a lot from their playbook. I mean, I definitely saw in the Super Bowl them getting a couple touchdowns because they ran motions, and then they saw coverages that they liked. I mean, I know that's they how run, Sky Moore found they the end zone. Run and, one guy, but I, I, I like it with different formations. A lot of trickery. I, I don't see any of that. No, you want them to look like the Dolphins. But, don't the Dolphins? But Mahomes, the Dolphins also, are kind of Mahomes also sees things that Sam doesn't see right no, now. No, obviously. You can't compare quarterbacks. Right. But pre-snap motion, I can compare. Yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't noticed that. To try that. to trick things up well, a little I, bit. I hope he has something to confuse the Philly defense in store, the enemy. Because if he just runs something that's semi-vanilla and and they're onto it, they're onto the scent, it's going to be a long day All right. for Sam Howell. Mahomes is a whole different story. There, there was a, a, a clip that went viral of one of his throws this week. If you watch in slow motion, he's getting pressured. He steps up in the pocket. He has a guy about 35 yards downfield on the right, maybe 40 yards downfield, covered. Mm-hmm. And he throws it to a spot in the bucket mm-hmm. perfectly into the guy's hands with the corner's arm like a foot away. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's He might be the greatest quarterback <laughs> to ever play the position. Yeah. He's top two or three. All right, let's go to Shane. Seen. Shane calling actually from Philly. Shane, what's up? Hey, what's up, fellas? Hey, Junks, good morning to you what's guys. Up? You guys, thank you for uh, what you guys do for plus 20 years in this area. We Thanks. love thank you guys. Thank you, Shane. You guys are fantastic, man. We love you guys. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Here's the thing. You, as you guys know, I travel all the place. I'm here in Philly. I just left yesterday to come up here. Look, Eric V. Enemy has got to do something. He's got to he's got to get this run game going. But here's the thing, though. It all boils down to the offensive line. Hell, we can't even run block. That's where we're at. He should address this offensive line. This offensive line is going to cost him his job. And Eric the Enemy, I don't know if he's going to be here after this year anyway. Are they just going to give him the head coaching job? No. If, if they fire Ron, he's that. not getting the job. No, no, he's gone. Not unless it's like no, a top, top five not. offense. They're going clean house. And here's the other thing. I told everybody, I know Hen and Hooker shouldn't, uh, well, I told, we should have drafted Hen and Hooker at 16 or got an offensive lineman or something. But right now, this kid is going to be like David Carr. David Carr was not a bad quarterback. David Carr just got gunshot because every time he went back in the backfield, he got killed. I do worry about get, that. I do worry about that. Here's the thing. That's what's going to happen to Sam Howell here in Washington, D.C. This kid is a good quarterback. But the problem of it is you can't get hit that many times at this level. And he's got to learn. He, you got to get out of bounds. Or his career is going to be very short. He's going to be up in a box like David Carr somewhere. Look, he, he's a good quarterback. But the problem of it is, is Eric's problem, his pride is in that game. Look, it wasn't working Sunday. 
but he still went to everything. It's a pride thing. At some point, you got to pull him out of the game to protect your investment. All and right, they, thank they, you, they, Shane. They thank you. Forward. Just to just to look ahead to the Eagles, they're giving up only forty eight yards per game on the ground. Right yes. now, the Patriots actually had some success against them. It was throwing the football. Mac Jones in Week One, all right, Weeks Two and Week Three, they pretty much just mauled opponents. But mm-hmm. in Week One, the Patriots had a chance to win that game. Mac Jones threw for 316 yards. He dropped back 54 times. In the rain. Had the three touchdowns. He did have one pick. They ran for 76 yards as a team, which is, I think, the most the Eagles have given up on the ground this season. But I'm just going to guess that he has better protection and a better offensive line than Sam Howell does. Yeah, he was only sacked twice. Right. So Well, and also he's been in the league for three years. Right. I mean, he's... He's probably seeing things a little differently than Sam Howell is. That's what and they actually, keep saying, Sam, all this, even though he's played a lot of football in college and everything, at the pro level, this is still all new of schemes course. that he's seeing. And actually, the Vikings, um, in week two against the Eagles, they passed for 364 yards, four touchdowns from Kirk Cousins. So, so they're going to look at that. The film. formula to actually compete with the Eagles is throw the ball. Okay, but... You're you're now comping him to Kirk, who I believe is leading the league in all sorts of statistical categories. Yes, and he has the ball. Like I mean, no slight on Howell, look. Sam Howell's fine. He's not Kirk Cousins. Yeah. Like to comp him to that is no. and no slight on Terry McLaurin. We don't have Justin Jefferson. That's well, another level. I mean, yeah, yeah, but I do think as much as they need to run the ball, like when they script up these first ten plays, mm-hmm. gonna be a lot of passing in there. Probably right. There's going to be a lot. They might be forced to do it, too. I mean, let's because, see I mean, how the defense plays. Because if they're only giving plays. up 40, what do I want them to do? Just hand off and be second and 10? I mean. No, there's no, got to be some sort of balance, the third, though. the third and distance to go this past week for the commanders was 10 yards. Because you know if he drops back 40 yards. times, he's going to get pummeled. Right. You just know that. Yeah, but he can't. He's got to drop back and just get rid of it. Like, one, two, three, boom. One, two, three, boom. Well, one, two, three, boom. I'm like, sure that's. That, when you hit that third step, just get rid of it. Yeah. Stop this five steps. Seven step drop stuff. We do we're not good enough for it. Jay, what's up? Hey guys. Um I I, I you guys are saying that you don't know much about football. I know I and, and I probably know poop balls. But what I do know is that there's not a quarterback, past, present, or future, that could be successful in the NFL if they're running for their life every Sunday. Um and we have not been able to protect the quarterback since Chris Samuels. Um had, it went down years ago and got injured, and his and his, his season was in. His career was ended. We have not. And for for forgot about I, I Trent. They saying, had Trent Williams. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, no. Oh, they had Trent Williams. Right. Yeah. I, I, I guess I guess what I'm saying is Sam Howell. We, we keep talking about how he does his five steps. This is what his rhythm is. This is this is what he's been successful doing to get him into the NFL. So what we should do if we're going to use him, if he's going to be our future. We got to get protective. We got to get players around him to protect him. He's young. He can't. You know. We we gotta we gotta expect for him to make young mistakes. We have to get the veterans in there to protect this guy. He's not going to be successful at, here in DC. This is what happened. This is what happened with with, with RG three. He was a good quarterback. He could not stay healthy because we really couldn't protect him, and he had to he had to run. Um, well, he also again, you, no, 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 no. Right. There's more to it with RG3. It wasn't just protection. I mean, yeah, I, he I wasn't good it, at yeah, processing. Yeah. <laughs> Once they took away kind of the ability the for him to run for like 800 yards, a thousand yards in a right. season, and defenses adjusted to the RPO, he wasn't great at processing, going through progressions to get to second and third receivers. Oh, you're seeing that running with Justin, an NFL offense. You're seeing that with Justin Fields now. Mm-hmm. Justin Fields is dropping back, and he doesn't know what he's seen. And after he played so well last year, and especially, the, to that especially <laughs> the second half of the season, he was putting up great numbers. But he's regressing. Yep. And the question is why? I'm stealing this from Pedro Schmidt YT on Twitter. He points out Washington's offensive line when Ron got here was Trent Williams, Eric Flowers, Chase Roulier, Brandon Sheriff, and Morgan Moses. A couple of pro bowlers I mean, in there. that's... That's a pretty good offensive line. Now, I understand there were there were bridges burned with Trent Williams with the training staff, and he he made he was more Snyder related, but, not Rivera. But if, if my, I mean, if you're Ron Rivera, don't you come in and try to rebuild that bridge and be like, you know what, we've got a this is a Hall of Fame left tackle here. I'd kind of like to keep him in the building instead of just let him go elsewhere. He didn't value um, 
Sheriff, he signs a big free agent deal, and look what you're left with in 2023. Yeah, I mean, but you, everybody said you don't give a guard that amount of money. You can't have it both ways, Cakes. Everybody yeah, said yeah. that. And, and Trent Williams wasn't coming back, no matter I, what Ron told him. You know, you know Cakes, Cakes always mocks uh, teams for taking offensive line in the draft, but he, he's very... Very pro offensive line right it. now. I'm usually against it unless there's a glaring need for it, which there has been here for the last couple of drafts. And Ron just says, "You know what? We'll just we'll just bring in my guys like Norwell and Trey Turner, and hey, we'll bring, Eric Bieniemy. What about your guy over there, Andrew <laughs> Wiley from Kansas City? Let's bring him in. <laughs> See, my beef. Well, you're right. Cakes, that's more my beef. Cakes <laughs> usually likes to take receivers first, second, third, fourth round. I know. Yeah, but that's I do. more my beef. <laughs> I do. That's more of my beef. That's how I build my teams. It, we saw there was a run on linemen, but before that, they settled for mediocre guys in free agency. That's more my beef. They're turning out draft. to be mediocre, no <laughs> yeah, doubt. So far.